What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts. My name is Spidey and I use my degree in sociology and psychology, my certifications in criminal interrogation and body language analysis, and over 10 years as an award-winning mentalist to teach people all over the world body language and behavioral analysis. This week we are looking at the Royal Fab Four. So shortly after the passing of Her Majesty the Queen, her two grandchildren, Harry and William, went to Windsor Castle with their spouses, Meghan and Catherine, and they walked the grounds, they looked over the flowers that were left there from the crowd, they met the crowd, and there is a lot of really fascinating stuff happening with their body language. So in this video, we're going to look at the specific body language that we're seeing, the facial expressions, the dynamic between the couples, the dynamic between the sets of couples, and all the little details that we can notice in the way that they are conducting themselves. Now before we jump into this analysis, I want you to have a chance to form an opinion and I want to hear what you think. So I'm going to show you some clips now that we're going to be analyzing and I want you to look at this and get a sense of what you're feeling. So we're going to look at the very important footage of them getting out of the car and walking forward. We're going to look at them looking over the, the cards and well wishes and the flowers that have been laid out and we're going to look at them interacting with the crowd. I'm going to show you some brief clips here, but I want you to look at this. What are we seeing in their body language? You might focus on one of them. You might focus on all four. You might notice a specific moment. You might notice the dynamic between a certain two or all four of them, whatever you want to focus on. I also want you to pay attention to shifts in confidence. For any one of the four, are there moments where you see more confidence and then less confidence rise and fall? Pay attention to that as well. So here are the clips. Take a look. And also William and Kate have been doing the same thing. Amy Lewis has been watching the four of them take time out this afternoon to have a look at those flowers. Amy, how was it received by the public when they realised that the princes and their other halves were going to be stepping out this afternoon? Uh, it is a huge, huge moment after everything that's happened with the departure of Harry and Meghan from the royal family, the claims made on that long and infamous Oprah Winfrey interview. The very fact that the two brothers and their wives are doing this right now, I think most people might conclude that in death the Queen has been able to bring these two brothers, the siblings and their wives together. On the other side of the park to where William and Kate, Prince William and Kate are, where they are greeting members of the public, they are taking bunch of the flowers. Interestingly, I think one of the security guards just asked Meghan if she wanted him to take the flowers away. She says, no, it's fine, I will carry them. You know, because they are making their way down that path. They are greeting people, they are taking time and talking. But still, they are out now still meeting members of the public uh, after spending some time looking at messages. Uh, each couple were holding hands. It was quite poignant, of course, that it was here at Windsor Castle because this is where the Queen has spent the last couple of years living and indeed where each of the brothers at the moment is either staying uh, and has been staying in the case of Harry for the last few days or in the case of William where he's now living in Adelaide Cottage just next to Windsor Castle.
All right, so there it was, and now it's time for me to hear from you. So pause the video. If you need to, go back and look at it again because there's a lot going on. And even for me, every time I looked at it, I noticed more and more subtleties. So you might need to do that. Then head down to the comments and let me know what are you seeing. Again, you could focus on any one of the four. You could focus on the group as a whole. You could focus on each couple. Let me know. What are you seeing? What are some specific moments you're seeing? What's the overall vibe you're getting? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. All right, now it's time for me to jump in and point out what we're seeing with the body language, what we're seeing in facial expressions, what we're seeing in the dynamic between the couples. And for this analysis, I have a very special guest joining us for the first time on the channel. This gentleman is a manager and senior mentor at the Body Language Academy, which is an online body language certification course founded by Joe Navarro, one of the most celebrated authors and body language experts in the world. He's also a licensed trainer of the Paul Ekman program, which means he really understands facial expressions and micro expressions, and that's gonna come in really handy today. So he is a body language expert, a facial expression expert, with background in military and working for the Australian government in government relations. So everyone, I'm really excited to bring to the channel uh, my good friend and teacher, David Stevens. Welcome to the channel. I'm really excited to have you here. Yeah, hi Spidey, it's uh, really great to be here uh, from the other side of the world, coming to you from Australia, and uh, I'm very excited to be uh, doing this uh, small collaboration uh, with you. Uh, you cover so much in your channel, and today uh, very excited to be looking at the Royals, and of course we're both from Commonwealth countries, Yes, uh, and it's certainly been a focus for both of our countries with the, the recent passing of uh, Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, so let's jump right in. Let's focus now first on the walk. So they get out of the car, they greet a couple of the people on the sites, and then they start walking towards the crowd. And there's a lot going on there. So let's start by taking a look at that. Let's jump right in, as you say, and have a little look at the video. Let's look at when they first turn up in the vehicles and when they get out at the point where Kate... She gets out of the vehicle, and there's a really interesting point that I'd love to uh, to have a look at us, a snapshot in time uh, per se, and it's about where if we can uh, line up the video to where Kate is uh, just passing the front of the car, in fact, where she's just um, about to cross uh, over the number plate, and if we pause it there, let's have a look, and, and I would ask your viewers to have a look at this snapshot in time and to have a think about who looks confident in this, in this snapshot. You've got... Of course, you've got um, Harry and William uh, about to engage with the official. But look where their hands are. They're, they're very close together. They're very still um, not looking terribly uh, sort of confident. Um, William there, he's adjusting the front of his jacket. Harry's got a hand across there. But you've got, look at Kate, and she's striding out. She's walking with purpose. And I'd really like to talk a little bit about what it means to be confident, what it means to uh, be able to influence at this stage and by contrast have a look at Megan you know what do we see when we look at Megan in fact let me ask you another question who does Megan most reflect in this snapshot in time if you look at everyone else that's in this uh, framed in this in this picture who else does Megan look like who is she most similar to and I think a lot of people might not have noticed this but if you look at the aide who is actually standing on the far side of the screen um, next to the vehicle in a very submissive pose. She's there with her feet are right close together. Her hands are down covering her um, her lower part of the body. Um, she's in a very submissive pose. I mean, that's her role. She is trying to be out of the way. She's trying to be on hand if she's needed, but she's trying to be invisible in that point in time. And in fact, if you look at Megan, she's very similar. She's standing back. She's taking things in. But you don't see a confident uh, a posure. Uh, at this point in time. So I think it's, uh, you know, it's interesting to look at those two figures who are in the whole shot. They're the ones that are, are trying to make themselves small, work out what's going on. Uh, and I think that's very much the case here with Megan when she gets out. David, I think that's a really great point. And for context, a lot of viewers may not know this, but this visit wasn't planned. So Harry and Megan were supposed to come at a different time with American media, but at the last minute, William said, no, scratch that, you're coming with us. And I wasn't there for that conversation. I don't know how forceful it was, if it was like a demand or a request, but this is very possible we're seeing in Megan's body language, a sense of not really being sure like of where she belongs in this because at the last minute she was 
asked to show up. So I think what you noted is perfectly valid and she might be just sort of trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? What are we doing? This wasn't her plan. She's not leading this plan. So that makes perfect sense to me. You were also telling me some amazing stuff about what we're seeing with, with Kate. So let's, David, take it over. Yeah, so Kate, let's talk a little bit more about Kate. Uh, she is, as I said, um, is all business here. She gets out of the car, she walks straight over and she commands the, you know, the location. She's the one that, that walks straight up and says hello to the waiting official and then sort of stands in place while everyone else sort of sorting out what's what's going on. And I think this speaks volumes to, um, you know, confidence and, and influence. People that are confident, people that are influential um, command their, their the space around them. They, ha- they take space. They um, act confidently. They walk with purpose. And very much here you see Kate walking um, with purpose up to that official hand out, extending out, straight away engaging, and then taking that space. But I really do love how Kate, she is confident, she walks with purpose, and she commands the space around her. Absolutely love that. Um, and and that's another misconception that we're talking about there. A lot of people take distance to mean like tension. That's not always the case. Distance can sometimes mean confidence. Like I, I, I this is my bubble, I take my space, And so I don't necessarily think, especially because, once again, we're not used to seeing a lot of public displays of affection between William and Kate. So to me, this is very normal for both of them to take that space. They're here to honor his grandmother. This is strictly professional. Uh, It's not time to be lovey-dovey. And this could very well be what we're seeing, a sign of respect rather than distance, per se. I want to talk about a couple of things here that jumped out for me. So, and and a lot of it is involving Harry. I want to start by talking about the way he's holding Megan's hand, which David, I'm sure you noticed. And this isn't completely atypical. We've seen him hold her hand this way before. They are very touchy, the two of them. Uh, They often hold hands, they, they hold each other. He puts his hand on her back, he puts his hand on her shoulders. We see this a lot. And this method of holding hands is something we've seen before, although it's not the way he always holds her hand. The way Harry is holding Megan's hand is a very leading, dominant way to hold someone's hand. His wrist is inwards like this, and hers is outwards like this, which is, it's very hard to push or pull when you're like this. It's much easier, like imagine an arm wrestling match where I'm like this and you're like this. The person like this is going to win because there's more strength like this. So you have more control like this. You can pull and push someone around more like this with the wrist inwards. It's also protective because it's his hand over hers. So it's, I'm protecting, I'm leading, I'm comforting. And there's so many different interpretations for this. Once again, remember, this was a different plan. Maybe Megan said, Harry, I really would have wanted to go, just the two of us. And this is him protecting her and saying, it's okay, we're gonna be fine. He's leading the way. And we see a lot of that because Megan is taking a lot of her cues from the other couple. We see a lot of confirmation glances as she looks over as they're walking. And David, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I interpret that is she, she's looking for guidance here. She, she, she seems a little thrown off and those confirmation glances are, okay, what are we doing? Is this, this was good? We're doing this? Okay, we're doing that. Would you agree that there's a, I mean, you said it with the body language, but Megan is very much following here. Oh, absolutely. I think that she is unsure in the situation. You do get, as you you put it, those confirmation glances. She's looking to Harry for reassurance. She's looking potentially to Kate and William for the the lead. You know, what what are they going to do? Where are they going to go? Where does she fit in? It seems to be sort of the big, if I had to put a, you know, sort of a catchphrase around it, she's trying to find her place in this setting, in this royal setting, um, something that uh, that that has a lot of conflicting things perhaps going on in her mind as she's sort of uh, you know thinking about and she's about to the other thing to think about of course is they're about to go and greet um, a crowds of uh, of well wishers but given some of the press that she has had and the sort of the that may well be playing on her as well in terms of how will I be received, what what sort of reception. And, and I do think you see that as they're walking across towards the crowd, uh, in particular, you do see her looking down. She seems to, to really be lacking um, some confidence as maybe she's 
playing through her own head. How is this going to work for me? How, how am I going to be received? Yeah, inner monologue. When we look down often, that's inner monologue, little pep talk to herself, like trying to, okay, here's, here's the plan. Here's what you're going to do. Looking up. Okay, so I, I think you nailed it. She's trying to figure out what her place is here. Uh, let's talk about Harry's body language a little bit because there's a lot of blocking behavior going on and it's almost crazy to what extent there's transference of blocking. So if we look at William, right in the beginning when he comes out of the car, there is quite a bit of blocking. We see this, the hand over here, which is, a, which is very common by the way in royalty, because sometimes in the, the hands go actually into the clothes like this, it's a very regal royal way to stand. So he's got his hand over here, um, and you know, sometimes they come together, but at some point they go, they come apart with William and he walks confidently like this with his arms by his side. If we look at Harry, there's almost no point where there's nothing in front of him. He's got the one hand, then he switches to the other hand, then he comes up to touch the beard, then he comes down and then he puts his hands together and there's just always something. And the moment one moves out of the way, something else comes in its place. Uh, he, he even adjusts the button at some point. He's playing, and, and we call this shielding or blocking. So I think him as well, and there might be some mirroring going on here between the two brothers as they're looking at each other for cues, but Harry's just taking it to another level. I do think that right in the beginning, coming out of the car, even Harry himself is not sure how him and Meghan are going to be received here. Because there's a lot of controversy with their place within the family. So I think a part of him is uncomfortable, not sure. And, and that's a lot of what we're seeing both with Harry and with Megan. Yeah, I absolutely. Are. It's really interesting to, to watch them both, both William and Harry, when they first get out, there's adjusting of jackets. And, and you do see it in the past, especially when Harry is wearing a jacket, he will often just Google Harry handed jacket and you'll see a, you know, a whole stack of photos with him sort of doing sometimes what looks like slightly awkward hand gestures, but for him, this is a, it is a, a, a pacifying behavior. It's something that he does to comfort himself, to make himself feel a bit more at ease. Um, and uh, you see them both. You see both Harry and William do that when they first get out of the car. And, and I, in one, in, to some extent, that's not unexpected. When we first turn up to a, uh, a new place, when we've got to work out initially what's going on, most of us will do something, whether it's adjusting a collar or your jacket or whatever it is. It's, yeah, absolutely. Maybe your ring or your watch. There's a, there's a whole range of different behaviours that all of us do when we're somewhere new, when we're adjusting, when we're trying to take a gauge of what's going on. And so absolutely you see those. Especially coming out of a car because you know that some things may have shifted while sitting down, especially knowing those cameras are on and the world is watching. So that initial grooming is very justified but for William it goes away for Harry it it just really persists yeah you're absolutely right the big difference is as you've said is that for William he adjusts and gets ready and then he's set more or less um, for Harry the behaviors continue and continue and continue and um, and yeah there's a really interesting in fact as Megan's walking across, you see a really interesting series of behaviours and positioning of Harry. One of the things that really interested me was uh, when William and Harry get out of the car, they position themselves and Harry is clearly very conscious that he's not the first one to greet the official. He waits for William to do that. He then shakes the hand. Um, and then you see Kate, as we've talked about already, confidently walk across and greet the official. Um, that's all fairly straightforward. But then the big question is about Megan. And you can see straight away that Harry's concern is for Megan. Where is she going to fit in? What's going to happen with her? Now, William does the right thing. He turns around and, and points towards Megan to say, and, you know, here is the, uh, the Duchess of Sussex as she comes across, um, which is great. And that gives Megan a bit of a lead to go up and say hello. Um, but then something really interesting happens. And it's, what Harry does, I, I think initially Harry was expecting that Meghan would stay up close near the official, but she doesn't. She steps right back. Another, you know, um, her trying to work out her place. You know, where does she sit? She she takes herself to the rear. She takes herself out of the main frame. And straight away, Harry is put in this awkward position of, I want to support my wife, but now I'm no longer in a, in a position to do that. So he then has to shuffle around 
to be next to Megan and you get straight away it's the hand around and uh, and the comforting uh, gestures that you see there. There's also a really interesting small interplay with uh, Kate and William at this stage. As Harry moves around, you see Kate take a small step forward. So she's actually making room for, for Harry to adjust. And if you if you look carefully, maybe if you freeze it on the, the point, you don't see William doesn't move, but he actually leans forward. And you see this sort of, it's him giving some room for Harry as he moves forward, but it's, it's, it's a lean. Um, and as soon as Harry sort of settles in with Megan, you can see him relax back into a more upright position. But those little dynamics, so I think William and Kate were both making an attempt to to let to fit Harry back into to wherever he was wanting to go. But it is this very awkward moment of Harry sort of going, I know it's all about supporting Megan. And so he has to sort of move positions. Yeah, it's interesting to see that shift. There's a lot of after you, no, after you, after you, after you, after you, after, like everyone's just sort of try, everyone's trying to do their own thing while being conscious of the other three parties and how they're going to be perceived and how my behaviors affect their behaviors and the media is going to talk about how gracious I am towards everyone else. So they're all aware of themselves, but also the way they interact with the other three. It's really, it's really marvelous to see that. Let's talk about William really quick. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening here. So once he relaxes, once they're walking forward, there's a few things you wouldn't expect to see. And, it, you know, is it grief? Is it sadness? So let's, let's talk about what these things are. And I'm just going to quickly mention this because I love the, the term that I use for this, which is the Atari eyes. And David, you and I have talked about this. The eyes that go outwards like this, like the logo of Atari, the, the, the gaming company. Um, and associated with sadness, we are seeing some of that throughout, even when he's talking to the guests. And this is something that uh, William often has on his face. In serious moments, the eyebrows do naturally do that sometimes. And I think it's the reason a lot of people empathetically connect with him often. He gets empathy out of people because of the physiology of his face. But what's interesting to me is two other things. One is the fists. So another friend and teacher of mine, Chase Hughes, which David, you're quite familiar with his work as well, uh, talks about digital flexion a lot. When the fingers come inwards, this is stress. Uh, it could be anger, you know, in, in, in aggression or in high stress, we tend to do this. First of all, it's comforting to have the fingers in like this. It's easy to pacify. But second, you know, obviously fight or flight with fight, we make fists. So it's rarely a good thing to see fingers go inwards. When we relax, they tend to go outwards a little, not too much, but they relax. So we're seeing digital flexion there. The hands by his sides are not relaxed like this on his thigh, the way you would expect to see, but in fists. And if we go to his face, we're seeing a bit of a pouty face. We're seeing this, this kind of thing. And it would be a sin for me to talk about facial expressions here when David's here. So David, what are we seeing in William's expression here? Once the dust has settled, they're walking forward. What are we seeing on William's face? Yeah, great, uh, great segue, because we really do see a period when they're walking forward and it's almost as if William is going through a, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make too much of this, but you, you definitely see a period of adjustment as it's, it's, he's about to engage with the public. He's about to go and, and look at the flowers and the cards. Um, he's about to sort of, sort of move into this business phase. And so you do see a number of things that you've been talking about on his face, as you talked about the Atari eyes, the, Glabella, the part in the middle of the face here that goes together and up when you see sadness in someone's face. And for him, it's, it's you know, he's thinking about, you know, potentially the loss of his grandmother. He's been thinking about, um, you know, his public perception. There is a lot to lose. There's a lot at stake. While we're talking about the, the eyes and the, 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 the sad Atari eyebrows, this was also very present on his father's face during his first speech as king. That expression, they, they both have it in common to where the eyebrows do that and you really connect with that. Uh, so it's interesting to see how that plays out, that in the context where they're thinking for one of them it's his mother, for one of them it's his grandmother, the loss, the grief, father and son, we're seeing that same eyebrows. Yeah, the, those behaviours, as you say, it is present in his father. You do see it in him quite regularly as he's having these moments um, and you see it here as he's walking forward um, with the with the other three uh, and it's almost it's a transition phase for him so you see that that look in his eyes 
you've talked about the digital flexion and it's almost a common i call it a cluster of behaviors where you see the the sadness in the eyes you see the digital flexion and then his hand once again goes up to his jacket and so there's this series of things that happen and for him i think it's 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 sort of his game face it's it's processing some of those emotions especially that sort of sadness as he walks through and gets ready to engage with the public and then of then of course you've got uh, megan and harry who walk hand in hand together as they go towards um the the flowers and and the public and and here you see a number of um you know some pacifying behavior you see megan her hands in the hair adjusting her hair a lot for her when we've seen this from the very beginning when she got out of the car uh, that she does this as a way to sort of comfort and get herself ready for engaging with the public. Um, it's very much something she does to sort of calm herself down. You also see those confirmation glances once again across towards William and Kate as she looks to them for for the lead, uh, essentially. Um, this is really is their show. They're the, the senior couple. They're the ones with the experience. Um, and, uh, and so she's looking across there. But this brings us to the really interesting transition. I know we've talked briefly about it before, but this is when they're coming around that gate. And this is where I've seen some media take this completely out of context and really get this wrong. And we can show the still photo here and, and let's have a look at that if you pull that up. And you can see here, it, it looks like for all intents and purposes that, um, uh, that William has got his hand around Kate in a loving gesture. And I've seen some media say, look at last William's showing some affection um, uh, and, and really comparing once again, uh, William and Kate to Harry and Meghan. And that, and that by the way, is a, is a common mistake in body language to where we set up a standard or we set up a test for affection that's completely made up. Not all touch means affection. So if you're looking for touch as the only benchmark for affection, you're going to fall into that trap of seeing that touch and go, Oh, there it is. Okay. We, he finally got, he finally showed some affection. But what you're doing is you're shutting off your critical mind into saying, what else can that touch be? And it's very simple to know what that touch can be. Just look at his other hand. It's pointing, it's indicating. So David, what does that touch actually mean? Tell us. Yeah, so in this instance, uh, as, you, as you've uh, indicated, it is actually, it's actually William um, providing some direction, steering Kate in, in a particular direction. So it's him guiding Kate in a loving way, you know, a hand around the back, but um, but it isn't a, it's not like we see with Harry and Meghan who are reaching and holding each other's hand and, and, and sort of hands around the waist all the time. Here it's William's using it as a way to guide his wife in the direction that he wants them to go. And they all very much take William's lead here. You know, you see Harry and Meghan drop back a little bit as they almost sort of cut in front of them as they head over to the side that William wants them to go. Uh, so in this instance, to say that this is, you know, William suddenly um, showing affection that he doesn't normally do um, is completely out of context and he's completely wrong. He's He shows his affection in his own way to his wife, but very much here he is uh, helping to guide her with that hand behind her back. All right, so now they've made it right past the gate. They're going to look at the flowers and we're going to look at their behaviors. And there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here while they're looking at the kind wishes and the flowers that people have left for their grandmother. But before we get to that, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavior analysis content. There's a lot of fascinating stuff happening once they get to the flowers. And I want to start by focusing on something Harry does. And we've talked a lot about Harry's physical proximity to Megan. They're holding the hands, he's holding it in a very protective, dominant way. Uh, his hands are constantly on her. And he really proves this when it's time for them to split and look at the cards and the flowers individually. So in body language is something called taffy eyes. David, I'm sure it's an expression you've heard very often. And this is when uh, speakers, they're talking to someone and the head pulls away and then the eyes pull away. And what Harry did here, I coined this, I created this term called the taffy hand because he's got his one hand on her and as he moves across, he immediately transfers and the other hand is now on her arm. And as he moves away, that hand moves from her arm to her back, to her other arm, and then it finally splits. So instead of just this quick breakaway, it's this really dragged out transfer of hand, 
move across and it's really dragging. And even as he's moving away, his arm is really extended. So it's really like this pulling taffy where he's lingering that hold. And to me, that really confirms to what extent there's an exchange of comfort here. And you can argue that she provides him comfort, like she's a pacifier for him, or he is comforting her. Both can be argued, but we really see it in that moment because that is the longest it's ever taken someone to let go of someone else. But David, I want to talk about uh, hand postures. So here we're seeing a lot of stuff, especially with the gentleman, with uh, William and with Harry, with their hands. So David, take it away. Yeah. Thanks, Fadi. And and yeah, there's a there is a lot going on here. And and I, I really love the point you made before about Harry and that transfer. It's a, for me, it's like a choreographed dance as he's going across. It's almost as if they're they're in you know doing the the tango or something, where he's transferring across. And uh, and there's that's that's his hands. That's his the touch, the hands. They're saying a lot, and we see a lot. Um, in this particular segment um, with the hands and because the hands can tell you a lot. And let's start with with William. Um, you'll notice in this uh, segment in particular, his hands are generally in front of his body. Now, some people might jump and say, oh, that means he's feeling insecure. What I think it means here is that he is showing appropriate respect and um, and being uh, uh, holding himself back uh, to, to give that honour to his grandmother, to... Uh, um, to give that vibe that he is in tune with what's going on and he's very much focused on the cards, people's well wishes. It's not about him. And so for all those reasons where you see his hands for extended periods of time here being sort of held in front. So it's about the attention's not on me. It's about what's happening here. It's about um, these tributes. Um, and uh, and so I, I think it's, it's a very appropriate behaviour. If you look at... Um, in in any military context, and I've, you know, I've, I've served in the Australian military, um, and there is another uh, when you're doing a memorial, when they're playing the last post, for example, in the Australian, you'll have soldiers around uh, a memorial. Their hands will actually come forward with their weapons to the front, and their heads will bow down as a sign of respect. And so, you know, so even in the military context, there are times when the hands in front can. Um, sort of show that respect. And then let's quickly look at Harry as he's going along, when he hasn't got his hand around Megan, of course, um, <laughs> then we see a couple of other behaviours there. And there's a point there where he's actually playing with his uh, ring. You see him sort of playing with his ring. And this is where, once again, we'll see a lot of commentators potentially go, oh, no, the marriage is in marital trouble. Marital problems, marital problems. Uh. That's right. Look, you know, I've been married for, you know, 25 years myself, and I will still play with my ring. That doesn't mean that my marriage is on the rocks. It just means that it's a, it's a pacifying gesture. It's a comfort thing. It's something that I have in my hand. It's easy to go to. Um, it's a tactile feel, and I think you're very much seeing that with Harry here as he just brings his hand up and spins his ring as he's watching um, you know, Megan and others uh, engage with the flowers. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so let's not make too much of a gestures like that. Could, again, could be. If you see someone doing that and there's other things, like you see a contemptuous looking askance towards their spouse while they're doing that, like their spouse says something and they look over with this contemptuous side eye and they're playing with their ring, kind of come, maybe in that context you can say, okay, something's going on. But in this context, there's none of that because he's all over Megan. And that's, I, I agree, more consistent with pacifying. All right, now we're gonna tackle, I think, my favorite chunk of this whole thing, which is when they go actually meet the crowd. And we see some really fascinating stuff there. But before we do, David, we're talking about confidence, how to present ourselves, what our body language can tell us about how confident versus how stressed we feel. And you actually have a workshop coming up in three weeks, and your workshops are always great. I've taken a few of them, always a blast. And you have one coming up specifically about confidence and how we present ourselves. Why don't you tell us about that real quick? Yeah, thanks, Spidey. Yes, um, and it's a, it's a great segue. We're looking, a lot of what we're looking at in this video is about that confidence and influence and, and how that plays out. And it's certainly one of the, the big things I'm asked by a lot of people is how do I come across as being more confident? How do I come across uh, in and able to influence others uh, in better ways? And so, uh, yes, on the 8th of October, um, uh, it's a Saturday here in Australia or in North America, it'll actually be uh, Friday evening. 
um, because we're cutting across time zones here. Um, Yes, I'm I'm running a a two-hour online workshop where we'll be getting into what does confidence and influence mean when it comes to body language? How can we be portray ourselves as being more confident. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to engaging with uh, with people and helping people think in their own individual situation, how can they come across as more confident? How can they be more influential in the relationships that they have? So very exciting uh, uh, to, be, to be doing that uh, with people from around the world. So thank you. Yes, of course. And I'm really excited about the workshop as well. I will leave a link in the description for those of you who are interested in joining David and it's always a blast, always very educational. In fact, I've just had a fun thought. We're going to do a contest. We've never done a contest on this on this channel, but we're going to do one where I will buy two of you. I will buy two of you uh, access to David's workshop. So we'll talk about this at the end of the video because there's something coming up that I'm going to ask you to participate with in this video. And two of the commenters today, I will get you access to David's uh, workshop on the 8th of October. Was it David? Uh, on the well, 8th of October, what, what the seven, the night of the... It'll be the, yeah, it'll be the 7th, the uh, evening of the 7th in uh, North America. I'll, I'll, I'll ha- a code as well to give anyone that uh, is watching this 20% off uh, the, the joining price as well. If we use Spidey 20, how about that? Then Yes, uh, heck yeah. So I'll leave that in the description as well. I will, leave a, I will leave a discount code in the description. At the end of this video, we'll, 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 we'll do a little uh, contest to give two of you free access completely to the workshop on me because I want you guys to learn from this. I'm reporting the right way. I always get lost on stream. Yes, from this amazing individual. So we'll get back to that at the end of the video. Okay, so now we see the uh, Royals meeting the crowd and we're getting all kinds of different stuff from them, from the crowd, the way they engage, the body language, the shifts in body language. David, before we pass it on to you and talk about the specific body language, I wanna talk about one moment or rather, one event that happens numerous times. And I'm sure you noticed this, David. It's when the aides that are there come over to Megan to take the flowers from her and and walk it over, you know, to to where they're going, and she refuses. And we see this more than once. In the main footage that's being shared, we see it one very clear time where she refuses. And then there's this other angle I saw on Twitter where she refuses again, but Harry seems to have a little talk with her, like, no, it's okay, this is the way it's supposed to be done, and she gives the flowers. So I often, my viewers know this, like to look at things and really look at it from every possible angle and then narrow down what the possibilities are. With this one, I have four theories, David, as to why this can happen. So it's easy to jump to conclusions and say, whatever. I want to try to look at this as many angles. So I have four theories, David, I'm gonna lay them out, and I wanna hear from you David, which one you think is likely, and I want to hear from the viewers, which one you think is likely, and that's what the contest is going to pertain to for David's workshop. So David, here are my four theories as to why Meghan Markle refused to give up the flowers. The first one is very consistent with what we've been seeing so far, quite simply, pacifier. Having something in our hands is a great pacifying technique. Uh, it gives us something to kind of massage with our hands, something to clutch onto, something to block in front of us, and it feels good. Sometimes, like you said earlier, when we don't have something in our hands, we don't know what to do with our hands. So having those flowers in the hands is just a, a sense of comfort and pacifying. That is theory number one. Theory, I could see that you don't hate it. I see that you're on board with that one. Okay, that's good. <laughs> it's got the, yeah, okay, all right. The second is this, uh, image management or perception management. She knows these cameras are on, she knows that the cameras can see her, and she knows that if it seems like the crowd is giving her flowers, the crowd likes me. And this is if I have these flowers with me, this portrays an image, because Megan knows that she gets criticized a lot over social media, all over the media. You go watch any YouTube video of her, she gets absolutely ripped to shreds. And it's maybe subconscious or maybe conscious to say, oh, if I have flowers on me and I'm walking out with these flowers, it softens my image and it projects to the world that people like me. They're giving me flowers. That's the second one. Third theory, well, third and fourth are very related. um, And they both relate to humility. Uh, And this is basically, and this is something we see very often. You might be at a cocktail party and a waiter comes over and says, can I take that glass for you? You go, no, thank you, it's okay. And then we go put it ourselves at the bar. So it could be perceived humility, like I seem humble. If I say, no, no, it's okay, thank you so much. 
I'll hold on to these myself, but you're very kind. And she does say that you're very kind, thank you, but I'll hold on to it. That's perceived humility. Or the fourth one is actual humility. Her actually going, no, no, it's okay. I can hold on to these. Thank you. You're very kind. I do. I'm just going to hold on to these if that's okay with you. So those are my four theories. David, you might like one more than the other. You might have one to add, but just let's talk about this. Why is Megan refusing to give up the flowers? Look, some great theories there, and uh, you know this is the first time you've shared them with me, so uh, it's it's been interesting, sort of working through, yeah, where you're going with some of those, because I think it's it's like it's like any of these when we're trying to assess sort of body language and behaviours, um, there could be always ask the question why, always ask the question why, because there can often be multiple things going on, and we won't always know, you know, and as a you know someone that deals in behaviours. For me, it's always about how can this help me ask better questions? How, how can this help me engage better with whoever we're dealing with here? Now, clearly, we can't ask uh, uh, Megan what's going on in her uh, brain, but it is fascinating to think through these options. And I'd actually like to put another theory out there, um, a fifth one, just to <laughs> just to mix it up a little bit. But uh, perhaps it is also the, those flowers could quite possibly be um, a sign for her that the crowd actually does um, like her. That, <laughs> and with all the bad press that she's had so far, with uh, you know, with a lot of criticism, especially in the media, and I think sometimes it's overplayed in the media. It seems to be a trendy thing to do to jump on and you know criticize Meghan Markle. That's right. And regardless of what you think about it, um, and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying she hasn't had certain behaviors that merit that. We've certainly both seen uh, behaviors that merit criticism, things that she's done or said that we get. But yes, yes. it's 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 happening a lot. Is the bottom line that that's right? And so potentially these flowers for her are a symbol that actually people do like me, that they respect me. So by holding on to those, she's it for her. It's a it's a self comforting in the way that this is a symbol that the people actually do, at least some of them, do want to engage me, they do like, like me, and so psychologically. And, that and to add to that, I belong here. Yes. Because yes. this whole time we're talking about her struggling with where do, where do I fit in here? Do I belong here? Should I be here? But these flowers say to her, yeah, I belong here. So, okay. So the fifth theory is a mix of the first and second, because it's a, it's a bit of a pacifier, that comfort of knowing. And what was my second one? It was, yeah, her, her projecting the image that like, I'm liked, I'm wanted, I belong here. But yeah, the same way the humility could be either real or projected, that could be real. It gives her a sense of belonging. Love it. Five theories. The first is it's a pacifier. It, it's self-soothing to have that in her hand, gives her comfort. The second is, it projects to the world and to the cameras that, look, the crowd loves me. I belong here. Look at this. I have flowers. The third is projected humility. I'm humble. I appreciate the aid, but I don't need it. I, I can carry this myself. Fourth is actual humility of her saying, no, it's all good. What are I feeling that one's not going to get that many votes? I feel like number four is going to fall behind a little bit, but I just wanted to put it forward. And number five is David's amazing remix of one and two, which is, this gives her comfort and a sense of belonging in saying, I belong here. The crowd wants me here. I'm holding on to this as a reminder of that. In the comments, let us know what you think it is and why. Which of these five reasons do you think is the reason Megan is holding on to the flowers? And why do you subscribe to that one above all the other ones? I'm going to pick two people from the comments who decided to participate in the conversation and you are going to win access to uh, David's seminar workshop in October for confidence and body language. Let us know in the comments. But for right now, we're going to move on from that and we're going to talk about more broadly the body language of the Royals talking to the crowd. And I saw, I'm going to, I'm going to start really quick and then David, I'll, I'll pass it over to you. I saw a lot of great stuff coming from William uh, and particularly I saw a lot of lean-ins and a lot of head tilts, both of which really tell the person we're engaging with that we are interested in what they're saying. So if I'm talking to you, or you're talking to me, rather you're saying something, and I lean in, and I hold on to your hand, and I lean in, I'm showing you have my interest. And very often they would say something, and sometimes it was subtle, sometimes a little more pronounced, that head tilt. Head tilt is very vulnerable. It exposes our neck. We rarely head tilt when we're not comfortable, 
but it also shows sympathy and the acceptance of sympathy. Thank you so much. This is a very kind, empathetic, vulnerable thing that we can do. Now, often some people use this to gain sympathy, but in this case, it's happening quite often as he leans in and I'm seeing genuine connection, genuine care for the crowd, genuine empathy. I'm not sure if you disagree with that, David. That's what I got on William, but why don't you walk us through some other behaviors that we're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're exactly right. That head tilt is uh, is something, and it's something we see a lot, often in women. Um, uh, in fact, when I was filming the Joe Navarro uh, program, um, we did that in Copenhagen over in uh, in Denmark. One of the role players for some of the different scenarios was a model that we were using, and I actually had to keep reminding her to keep her head up straight because she was so used to doing this sort of modeling photography where she would be just automatically she would tilt her head because she knew that that was a way to seem more appealing, to engage with her audience. And so I was almost, for different roles we wanted to play, we didn't want that behavior coming out. So I had to do a lot of coaching around um, becoming less appealing in one sense by not head tilting all the time. Um, but yeah, here we see William and Kate um, really engaging with the crowd in a confident way, in a way that uh, they're well practiced in um, and I think absolutely uh, you see those behaviours in William with Kate as well. But you'll see Kate uh, very much confidently engaging with the crowd. And what I love is when she engages with children, she will actually get down on their level. And at a number of occasions, you'll see her crouch right down to engage with children. She's not looking down on them. She's getting down to their level. She's engaging them one on one. Um, and that's really great to see. And so it's a great reminder if we're engaging with children, the more you can come and engage with them on their level, um, you know, try to approach from an angle if you're, if you're able to. It makes them feel more comfortable and, uh, and more engaged. So uh, that's uh, something we're definitely seeing with Kate. If we switch over, though, and, and consider um, if we consider Megan and Harry, it's interesting once again to see the contrast here in one sense that they're very much, when they begin engaging with the crowd, they're doing it as a couple. They're not doing it sort of uh, separately in one sense, which you see with William uh, and Kate, but they're very much engaging as a couple. Often Harry has got his hand around Kate. And yeah, I just want to clarify him. that. The, the contrast you're making is not to suggest that one of them is closer and one of them isn't. This is just the way they do this. It doesn't mean that. Harry and Megan are closer than William and Kate. That's not what that means at all. It's just we're, we're looking at the different ways in which they move about the crowd. But what the way one does it speaks in no way to the affection or the proximity of the other couple. Just wanted to yeah. clarify that, but please keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that uh, yeah, they, and it's a continuation from what we've seen already in the rest of uh, of the video. And William and Kate are acting as they normally would in any royal engagements, where they are both confident, they're both engaging well with the crowd. You know, there's nothing unusual there. Um, you know, and then jump at Harry and, and Megan. Uh, and Megan, uh, you very much still see those comforting gestures from Harry, reassuring Megan, his hand around the back as they engage uh, together with the crowd initially. But then as time goes on, what you do see is that Megan begins to get a bit more confidence and they start engaging separately. And Megan's very good as well. She engages well with the crowd. You see her getting down and, and meeting children at, at their level. Um, you see them both uh, engaging quite well, but there is very much a period of adjustment from them doing it together as a couple to then them having um, more uh, engagements separately. And by the end of end of this period, they're they're very much they're in separate areas almost as they uh, as they engage. As Megan's very much got a lot more comfort comfort comfortable in engaging. Harry's obviously happier with how things are going, and so he's giving Megan a bit more distance. Uh, he doesn't feel he needs to be there with his hand on his back or holding a hand the whole time. Um, and so, and that's really great to see all four of them engaging well with the crowd and, uh, and having that rapport. Absolutely agreed. I think we're seeing a lot of signs there. And I think that's the main takeaway from this of out of the car, we're seeing quite a bit of tension, image management, posturing, grooming, and, as, and then William and Kate adjust really quick really quick. It takes them a couple of seconds and bam, they're on. And they're really good at that. 
Whereas Harry and Meghan need a bit more time. They're, they're still holding on to each other. They're still keep, they still need that comfort from each other. And we're slowly seeing that shift as they meet the crowd. We see that happen. We see that tension melt away as they get that boosting confidence from the crowd. And I think that's a perfect way to end it because it just shows how there's a transformation throughout these interactions. And on that, David, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we're going to get a ton of positive comments for your amazing contribution. And I hope you'll come join us again on the channel at some point. But it was awesome having you. It's been my absolute pleasure. I always enjoy, you know, this is always fun uh, and engaging with you and, uh, you know, big fan of your channel. So uh, it's, uh, it's a great privilege to be able to come and do something with you live. So I look forward to uh, working with you uh, again and again uh, in the coming months and, uh, and years. Let us know in the comments, everyone, if you would like to see that, if you would love to see David come back on the channel and do some more breakdowns with me. Like I said, he's an inspiration, he's a teacher, he's a friend. And, and as you saw here with these back and forths, sometimes we dig out things that individually we may not have seen because getting a second perspective is always great. And sometimes you're going to get a little bit more depth when we're working on these things together. So let me know in the comments if that's something that would interest you. For the contest, let me know in your comment which one you think of those five possibilities is the reason Megan didn't give up the flowers. Let me know why you think that. And it could be in the same comment. You could tell me like, yes, loved it. Would love to see David. Here's what I think about the contest. And I will pick two of you to um, have access to David's seminar about body language and confidence. Hope everyone enjoyed this and we will see you on the next one.